Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about C41 development. I first thought C41 development was super hard and I didn't want to do it. I didn't even try it and I thought it was hard and I never did it until I recently started doing more development and I realized that it really isn't that hard. Right now I've developed around 20 to 30-ish roles and I've been getting consistent results. So I thought I'd share it with you guys to make sure that you guys knew how to do it as well. If this sounds interesting, you're in the right place. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and smash that like button. Or if you don't like it, dislike it. It's fine. At least give me some feedback though so I can improve. Please. All the materials that I talk about will be in the description box below, so make sure to take a look. First off, you will need chemicals. I have here the CS41 from Sinistil. I love it, but this thing tends to go out of stock pretty frequently in Sinistil fashion. So if you can't get this, you can also get the Unicolor kit which is good as well. The only difference is this is liquid, so it's super easy to mix, whereas the unicolor one is solid, so you'll really have to make sure that they mix really well. Because if you don't mix it well, it's gonna show up on your film negative. The next thing you'll need is a Patterson tank. Um, I have a smaller one and a larger one. The, the only difference is that the smaller one takes 235 millimeter film and the larger one takes 335 millimeter film. For medium format, this takes one and then the larger one takes two. So that's it. And then you'll need a changing bag. This is if you're like me and you live in a cramped small apartment and you don't have space. You'll need a changing bag so you can change your film in a dark location without having to be in a room that is dark. That way you could just do everything in a bag. So I can watch Netflix and change film at the same time. The next thing you'll need is a sous, sous vide water cooker. I got this one from Sinistil, but you don't really need to get it from Sinistil. You can get any other water cooker and it should be fine. You'll also want to get a plastic container. I have a 16 liter plastic container. This is so that I can use the water cooker to heat the water uh, with the chemicals in it. The next thing you'll need is a digital thermometer. I got one from Kizen. Make sure you get a waterproof one because I had a non-waterproof one and it broke and I had to reorder it and it was not fun. You'll also want to get a measuring cup. I advise you to get a liter of measuring cup because usually when you're first creating the chemicals you're going to create a liter or a quart of the chemical for each of them. If you have a lot of hard water in your neighborhood you'll also want to get distilled water. I have a lot of hard water here and it started showing up on my negatives as artifacts so I had to get distilled water to make sure I had a consistent result. The next thing you'll want to get is a collapsible accordion bottle. I got the one from Sinistil. You could get one from Kaiser as well. The good thing about an accordion bottle is that you can put a chemical in and if it does not fill all the way up, you can push down the accordion bottle so the chemical is level with the lid. This makes it such that you'll have minimal air so your chemicals will last longer. Also, since it's a plastic bottle, it'll heat up a lot faster once you start the development process. Last thing, make sure you mark your bottles so you know which chemicals you're using. The next thing you'll need is a plastic funnel. I'll get something like this, a large one that is plastic because it stays fixed and it wouldn't slide out or it wouldn't spill chemicals. After that, you'll also need a chemical container. What I did was I got a Coleman cooler from Marketplace, that way I saved money. You'll also want to get scissors. This is especially true for 35mm because with 35mm film, at the end of the film, it's kind of stuck into the canister and it's easier to cut it than to yank it out. You'll also want to get two or three clothes hangers as well as multiple alligator clips. This is to hang the negatives. Optionally, you'll also need a 35mm film canister opener. I use this because it makes my workflow a lot faster. All right, now we're gonna look at how to reel film in a Patterson tank. Keep in mind that this needs to be done in a changing bag so light does not expose your film. If you look at the spool, there are two notches that are triangular. Our goal is to insert the film under the two triangular notches. Once we have film under the triangular notches, there are two ball bearings that you need to attach your film to. Once it latches on, we can shuffle the top and the bottom of this film spool, and this should put the film onto the spool.
once you have it completely on the spool and there are no remaining film left, we can cut off the edge and put this back in the Patterson tank. After it's in the Patterson tank, we will close the lid and make sure it's locked. Once it's locked, it is light proof, but be careful so it doesn't unlock. A few things to know before you start developing your film. C41 chemicals are reusable, so please make sure to reuse it for 14 to 20 rolls. There are a few things that you need to know about C41 development. The first being agitation. Agitation is the process of moving the film such that the chemi fresh chemical stays on the surface of the film. That way the development is even on the film itself. If this is not done properly, you can get low contrast, lower quality on the film itself. So this is an important step. The next thing you need to know is an inversion cycle. Basically an inversion cycle is the process of inverting a Patterson tank in this case to make sure that the chemicals stay fresh on the film negative. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this content so far, make sure to comment down below CS41 so I know that you're enjoying the content. But back to the video. For timing the development process, I use my iPhone stopwatch because it's sufficient and it does the job. After you have put your film in the Patterson tank, the first step of the process is the pre-soak process. We're going to do this for a minute with distilled water heated at 102 degrees Fahrenheit. There will be no agitation, we'll just let the Patterson tank sit with the water. After the pre-soak process, we're going to throw the water away. A few things to note before we start to develop our Blix process, please make sure to wear gloves and wash your equipment before the developer and the Blix process. This is because C41 is highly toxic. After we empty out the heated water, the next step will be the developer. This is the step where we add the developer chemical into the Patterson tank. We are going to do this for three and a half minutes. The chemicals need to be at 102 degrees Fahrenheit. For agitation, we're going to agitate for the first 10 seconds and then for every 30 seconds, we'll do a 4 inversion cycle. After every 4 inversion, make sure to hit the Patterson tank on a hard surface to remove the bubbles. Then place the Patterson tank in the container. This is done so we can maintain the temperature in the Patterson tank. After three and a half minutes, we can put the developer back in the developer bottle and we'll make sure to let minimal air in the bottle itself. The next step of the process is going to be the Blix process. This is going to be eight minutes for CS41 and six and a half minutes for Unicolor. The chemicals should be heated at around 95 to 105 degrees Fahrenheit and the agitation process will be exactly the same as the developer. The Blix process is where the chemical reaction occurs, so make sure to close the lid really tight. The agitation process is the same, we will do an inversion cycle every 30 seconds. After the inversion cycle, we will hit a hard surface and put the Patterson tank back in the container. After the Blix process, we'll start the water rinse process. Typically what I do is I use tap water and use running water as agitation. The water needs to be within the temperature of 95 degrees to 105 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point, the film is not light sensitive, so you can take the lid off. Then we'll empty the tank seven times and wait for the remainder of the three minutes. After the water rinse process, we'll start the stabilizer process. This will last from 30 seconds to a minute. I usually do a minute and we'll agitate for the first 15 seconds. And after that, we'll let it sit. Once the stabilization process is complete, your film should be fully developed. Um, the way I hang my negatives is with a clothes hanger and alligator clips like such. And I'll hang this on a high location so the negatives don't touch a surface. It is tempting to look at your negatives after they are done, but resist the temptation and wait for around three to five hours for it to dry. I usually try to wait as long as I can so I know for sure that they are dry. After they are completely dry, you can take them and start cutting the film and put them into archival sheets. One question I, I get asked a lot is how do I flatten my negatives? I'll literally put the archival sheet under four or five stacks of books overnight and they should be flat within the morning. 
If you found this video helpful, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell and the like button as well. Comment down below if you have any questions about the C41 development process and what I do, and I'll make sure to get back to you. But without further ado, thank you for joining me on my journey with film. I'll see you next week. And David out.